Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this tutorial series, we are creating this scrollable tabs or scrollable slider just like the YouTube homepage using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now in the previous video, I showed you how to create this design using HTML and CSS. So this is our progress as of now. Right now we are able to scroll to the left and to the right. But we don't have any functionality added to these buttons. So we don't have the left arrow displayed. And for the right arrow, we don't have any functionality. And if I click on any of these uh, anchor tags, they are not being selected. So if you go back to the original design, we are able to select each of these uh, anchor tags. And we also have this functionality. When we click on this uh, right arrow, we are taken to the right side. And when we click on this left arrow, we are taken to the left side. So this is what we're going to add in this video. Let's get started. <laughs> Right here is our source code and we have already linked our main.js file. So let's start with the JavaScript. Now the first thing we will do is we will add the functionality when we click on any of these uh, anchor tags, we need to select them. So let's go back and if you go to the HTML file, here we can see that for the first anchor tag, we have this class of active. So when we have this class of active, we have a different styling. So if I just remove this active class from here and if I add it to the second anchor tag, now we can see that the second anchor tag is selected. So what we need to do is we need to add these active classes using JavaScript when we click on the anchor tag. So let's go to our main.js file and first of all, let's reference these anchor tags. So the anchor tags are inside this scrollable tabs container division. So here let's type const tabs equals document dot query selector all because there are multiple elements and here we need to type scrollable tabs container and in that we have the anchor tag so I'll just type a now let's go ahead and add event listeners to all the anchor tags now since there are multiple anchor tags we need to loop through each of the anchor tags and add event listeners to each of them so we will use a for each loop for that so I'll just type tabs dot for each and for each of the anchor tags I'll just give it a name of tab and uh, let's add event listeners to all the tabs. So let's tap tab dot add event listener. And let's listen for the click event. And uh, when we click on the tabs, we need to set the active class to that tab. So let's tap tab dot class list dot add and active. Now if we go back to our design, and if I click on this uh, chess tab, here we can see it is active. And if I click on this live, it is active. Now the next thing we need to do is uh, we need to remove the active class from the previous element when we click on a new element. So for that we'll create a new function. So I'll just create a function called remove all active classes. And uh, in this we'll remove all the active classes from all the tabs. So let's type tabs dot for each and I'll just call it tab. And here let's type tab dot class list dot remove active now we need to call this function before adding the active class so here I'll just type remove all active classes right now let's go back to our design and if I click on another anchor tag we have the first one deselected and we have the new one selected so everything is working all right right now let's add the functionality of this right arrow so if I click on this right arrow we need to move the slider to the left so let's go back to our code and if you go to the HTML file, here we can see we have this division with the class of right arrow and in that we have this SVG. So we need to add the event listener to the SVG. So I'll just reference this SVG from here into the main.js file. So here let's type const right arrow equals document.query selector. And here let's type scrollable tabs container right arrow SVG. Right now let's add an event listener to this right arrow. So here I'll just type right arrow dot add event listener and let's listen for the click event. Right now when we click on this right arrow we need to move the ul which is the container. So here we can see this is the ul and in that we have all these list items. So we will reference this element right here. So here I'll just type const and let's just name it tabs list equals document dot query selector and here let's type scrollable tabs container ul 
right now let's scroll down and here we need to type tabs list dot scroll left and here we need to add a value so here just type plus equals 200 now you can add any value over here instead of 200 right now let's go back to our design and if i click on this right arrow we can see that the tabs list moves to the left now we need to have smooth scroll behavior so right now we can see when we click on these arrows it directly moves to that position so let's go back and uh, let's go to the style or css file and let's go to the ul and uh, here let's add scroll behavior and let's set it to smooth and now if you go back to our design and if i click on this right arrow we can see that it smoothly scrolls to the next position right now the next thing we will do is if we click on this uh, right arrow and if the slider moves to the left here we need to have the left arrow displayed and if we move all the way to the right this right arrow should disappear so let's add that code let's go back to our javascript file and here we need to select the right and the left arrow containers so if we go back to our html file here we can see we have this division in the class of left arrow and in that we have the svg so we need to select this container division left arrow and right arrow so let's go back to our main.js file and here let's type const left arrow container equals document dot query selector scrollable tabs container left arrow and let's also select the right arrow container so let's type const right arrow container equals document dot query selector scrollable tabs container right arrow now if you go back to the html file here we can see we have added a class of active to this right arrow so that's why we can see that the right arrow is being displayed over here. Now if you go to a style or CSS file, if we scroll down and go to the right arrow, here we can see for the active class, we are displaying the arrow. And when we don't have the active class, we are just setting the display to none. So here we need to add and remove the active class. So what we will do is we'll create a function for that. And uh, let's create a function called manage icons. And let's create this function over here. Let's type const manage icons. Now here we need to add some if conditions. So let's type if. And we need to check whether the scroll left value is greater than some value. We'll just set it to 20. So if the scroll left value is greater than or equal to 20, we will display the left arrow. So let's type tabs list dot scroll left is greater than or equal to 20. Now here we need to add the active class to the left arrow. So let's type left arrow container dot class list dot add active. And now let's add an else over here. So if the condition is not true, then we need to remove the active class. So let's type left arrow container dot class list dot remove active. Right now let's go back to our design and let's click on this right arrow. And now we can see that this left arrow is being displayed. Now when we scroll all the way to the right, we need to hide this right arrow. So for that, let's go back and uh, let's add some code for that. Now for this, we need to set a max scroll value. So let's create a variable called max scroll value equals. And we need to set it to the scroll width minus the client width of the tabs list. So I'll just type it over here right now and we'll just see the values in a bit. So I'll just type tabs list dot scroll width minus tabs list dot client width. And since we added the value of 20 over here, let's also type minus 20 over here. Now I'll just console.log the value over here. So I'll just type console.log. And uh, first of all, let's type scroll width and let's add the value over here, tabs list dot scroll width and let's add one more console dot log and uh, let's type client width and let's set it to tabs list dot client width now let's go back to our code and let's open the console so i'll just right click over here and click on inspect and let's open the console and now if we click on this right arrow here we can see the scroll width and the client width are displayed over here so if you go to the elements and if I select the element, so I just select the tabs list, which is the UL. Now here you can see that the width of the element is 700 pixels. Now the original width of all the elements inside the UL is more than 700 pixels. 
and that's because it has more elements and uh, we can scroll to the left and the right but since we have set a max width of 700 pixels it is showing this width of 700 pixels over here but if you go to the console here we can see the scroll width is 1164 pixels now that's basically the width that it can scroll so right now it is 1164 pixels let's go back to our HTML and uh, let's add some more elements over here and let's see if the scroll width changes so let's copy this and paste it a couple more times and now let's go back to our uh, design and uh, let's click on the right arrow now we can see that the scroll width has changed and it is now 1786 pixels but the client width stays the same now if you go back and remove all these elements from here and I'll just keep two elements over here and now if you go back to our design and now if you click on this right arrow now we can see that the scroll width is 700 pixels now if you add some more elements and the width is more than the container then it has some room to scroll so that's when the scroll width changes so let's go back and undo all of this now the scroll width also takes into account the current width of the element so that's why we can see here in the main.js file we have subtracted the client width from the scroll width the client width is basically the width of this tab list and the scroll width is basically the number of pixels it can scroll right now let's add an if condition for this so let's tap if and let's tap tabs list dot scroll left and if it is greater than or equal to the max scroll value then we need to hide the right arrow so let's tap right arrow container dot class list dot remove and active and let's add an else over here so if the condition is not true then we need to add the active class to the right arrow so let's tap right arrow container dot class list dot add active and now let's go back to our design and let's click on the right arrow and if you go all the way to the right the right arrow disappears now let's refresh this and let's scroll to the right and now we can see when we scroll to the right the code is not being executed so we need to add an image listener to the scroll as well so let's go back and uh, let's add an image listener to the tabs list so let's tap tabs list dot add image listener and let's tap scroll and here we just need to call the manage icons function so I just call it over here I just type manage icons and now let's go back to our design and now let's scroll to the right and now we can see that the manage icons function is working all right so if we scroll to the right the icon disappears and if we scroll back to the left it reappears now let's scroll all the way to the left and the left arrow disappears so the arrows are working all right now we need to add the event listener to the left arrow as well so when we click on the left arrow we need to scroll to the right so let's go back and uh, I just copy this from here and let's paste it down here and here instead of right arrow let's tap left arrow and I think we haven't referenced this left arrow so let's reference that over here I just tap const left arrow equals document dot query selector scrollable tabs container left arrow SVG now let's scroll down and uh, here for the left arrow we need to set the scroll left value to minus equals 200 now let's go back and uh, let's click on the left arrow and uh, we are able to scroll to the left and if I click on the right arrow we are able to scroll to the right and everything seems to be working all right so that's it for this video in the next video I'll show you how to add the drag functionality for this slider so here we can see this is the original design and if I drag to the left we are able to scroll so I'll show you how to add this drag functionality in the next video so if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day